Okay, uh, hi everybody. Um, I'm an engineer at HMH. Um, so I'm just going to talk about, um, again, two things <laughs> um, React and re or Redux and Reselect, and particularly about uh, normalizing your state in, in uh, Redux and uh, derived properties. But um, how do I move forward in this? Okay, there we go. So the project I'm working on at the moment is called uh, uh, You Solve It. So it's part of the next generation science standards for the US. Um, and they're affectionately known in, in work as CDLOs, so complex digital learning objects. So it's basically 80 um, quite rich interactive um, science experiments that um, have note taking which gathers together student uh, notes and they can then build a report. So, sorry about this. Okay, so I was uh, given a lot of freedom to pick the tools, so I obviously picked all the cool ones. Um, <laughs> uh, React, Redux, um, it's all in ESX using Webpack. Um, the report, which is just currently been worked on, has been built with Draft.js, so that's Really, really nice. Um, we were using D3 for some of the mapping and ex science experiments and also graphing. Pixie.js, when it needs to be quite animated. Um, and uh, yeah, because these are, you know, these probably would have been built in Flash five or six years ago, but now they're the same level of animation and stuff as, as we used to have, I guess. So, um, where am I next? Okay, so um, this is just something I found I was working with a lot of other developers and trying to architect these and one of the things I found is um, <coughs> we were creating Redux states, if you know anything about Redux, we were creating quite nested Redux states and they were becoming very hard to manage. Um, so I finally read all the documentation and uh, discovered you know, that I should really be normalizing my states. So this is what we did, started doing a lot more. So a normalized state is basically you're turning your state into like a little miniature database. Um, so everything's referenced by IDs. So if you see here, we've got data set IDs, run IDs. So that's each time the experiment was run, this would identify them. This is obviously really stripped back. Um, so the good thing is obviously your items are only defined once. Um, Reducers, if you've ever used Redux, are a nightmare if you have to nest them. They really just become really messy very quickly. Um, you have a consistent means of access, so everything is, you know, in my case, notes by ID, and you pass the ID of the object. Um, and by following this, you basically end up with a lot fewer uh, UI updates in React. Okay, sorry, a second. Here we go. So. One of the other nice things about this is, if you forget about the fact that I've made this constant, is you're most of the time passing around um, arrays of strings. So it's most of your app is just passing down these data strings, and it's only when you get to actually rendering an actual piece of data that you get a one-to-one -one relationship with the data object you're working with and the component that renders it. So. It makes it a lot easier to test that component and, and make it a reusable component. Okay, so where am I? okay, so all this led to one question with me, which was, um, where are all your kind of the properties that you manage your state live? Um, and again, we when we started working with Redux, we started we were storing where you were, you know, like a, a property like a phase and what phase we go on as you move through the experiment. So what I found was again that was a bad idea because you were creating a lot of state. So we started using reselect. 
So reselect is, it's basically all about minimizing your state. So you're keeping, storing as little state as possible. So that's better for persistence and better for testing and better for everything. Um, so you, selectors, which are basically like getters, um, in reselect are memorized. So once you get a selector once, it memorizes the result and if the inputs don't change, it returns the same value, so it makes it efficient. Um, and then they're composable, so you can create loads of them. So, um, let me see, sorry about this. So, essentially, within our app, um, what we started doing was we all of the navigational state, so where you were within the app, that was calculated by reselect functions. So, None of that was persisted or none of that lived in the Redux state. It was all just calculated on the fly and, and, and returned from memorized functions. And that worked out really well. It just meant that your Redux state was very clean, made up of very kind of uh, objects that made a lot of sense to the data. And uh, you, could also you could also visualize your state a lot easier and you didn't get caught up in worrying about, you know, how all the UI components actually worked. You could just put them in. So, that's why. Is that five minutes? Or? Thank you.